Hey there, everybody. Today I have the Elliott Brown Holton Automatic. For those of you that follow the channel and the website, you may remember uh, about a year and a half ago, I did a review of the new Elliott Brown Holton, and that one was a quartz. And a lot of people complained about the price with the quartz model. Now, I've long said I've been a fan of Elliott Brown watches. Uh, they seem to be a different nature of micro brand, if you will. They're just very rugged, very tough, very hard use. And you could tell instantly when you pick up one of these watches that they're built uh, very tough and, and just they feel very solid. But now that we have an automatic, well, that price did not get better. As a matter of fact, well, let's go ahead and talk about the price. Specs on the screen here in a minute, and uh, let's go ahead and get into this Elliott Brown Holton Professional Automatic Review. So before getting into this Elliott Brown Holton Professional Automatic Review, let me go ahead and remind you, if this is your first time here, welcome. Hope you enjoy this video. Check out some of our other reviews while you're here as well. I'll have some of them linked down below. And if you're not subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It is greatly appreciated, really helps grow the channel. Also, follow us on Instagram. You'll find out what we have coming in for review before it gets uh, reviewed here. And, uh, you know, we always post up some cool stuff over on our Instagram. So head over there, give us a follow. So let's get into this. And let me preface this before I get all into it. Now, one, this is not going to be a full blown out review because for the most part, this is exactly the same watch as I reviewed a year and a half ago. And the only difference is, is now it has an automatic movement. And as you saw on the screen, the automatic movement is the Seiko NH35. And we'll get into that a little bit later here in the video. But I will link somewhere either down in the description or you'll see it pop up on the screen. I will link to my original review of this uh, with the quartz movement. And really the only difference uh, be beyond the movement is going to be the colorways available. Uh, this one comes in more regular colorways, if you will. There's a black PVD case. This is the bead blasted case that you see here. And I'm trying to remember offhand what the other case is. I can't remember, but you can take a look on their website. Now, last year, a lot of the, a uh, couple of the variations, one, they had a very matte green dial, and that is the one I reviewed. It had a green rubber strap. This one I asked them, just send me the standard model, the bead blasted black dial, and you have the black rubber strap. And speaking of straps, there is apparently a bracelet that you could buy for this. And I didn't know that until I was looking on the site researching before I started doing this video. And it'll fit this model, and I think their Canford model. It is a bead blasted uh, bracelet, has the uh, ratcheting extension clasp on it and everything so if you're somebody that likes bracelet there is a bracelet option available but you will pay extra for it uh, it's not that cheap you're looking at about hundred and fifty dollars so back to this and and I'm just gonna start this off with uh, I love this watch and I pretty much across the board I love most of the Elliott Brown uh, product line I think they just make a really well-built, tough watch. And I've said this in many videos, even though I absolutely continue uh, to review the uh, Victor Inox Inox watches, I've always said, for it just feels to me that these watches built by Elliott Brown just feel like they're able to do more than the Inox watches. And I think maybe that's because they don't go so overboard with the marketing claims so the professional here, the, the Holden professional was in part designed uh, by a, a branch of the British military. And uh, as I said, the first version was quartz. Now we have an automatic. I think putting out an automatic was a good idea. A lot of us watch nerds, we love automatic movements. 
And the whole tough, hard use, everything, and, and Elliot Brown testing these watches, I mean, you can go to their website. You could see a lot of uh, independent reviews by other people really put this through the paces, if you will, and everything from boating to yachting to hiking to, to whatever you're doing, uh, this watch uh, should be able to take it. Design-wise, uh, I'm a big fan of this look. It's classic, it's simple, it has that Elliott Brown design to the case sides and the lugs. It wraps around the wrist very nicely. Uh, obviously the fitted rubber strap helps it uh, fit to the wrist nicely. I will say one thing though, the strap is unchanged from last year. Um, I knocked it for being kind of on the short side. It's still on the short side. So if you're somebody that has a larger wrist than seven and a half inches, uh, which is what my wrist is this is not going to fit you out of the box really um and that's i just wish the strap was a little bit longer and i know you cannot make a strap for every wrist size obviously a giant strap that fits an eight and a half inch wrist is going to look horrible on somebody that has a six and a half inch wrist and i get that you got to have a middle ground somewhere i just wish this was a little bit bigger but the rubber strap is very very comfortable as i said last year um it's it just wraps around the wrist very nicely. It's a good strap. Your dial layout, everything else is exactly the same. And for those of you that have this watch or for those of you that were considering one when the quartz version first came out, I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, at least on my example, that bezel is still looser than I would like. It just, it doesn't feel, it's like not like a lot of play in it or whatever. It's just a little bit looser than I would generally like. Uh, but other than that, just a great watch. The crown and the bezel are easy to grip. It's just a great looking tool watch. And that word tool watch gets overused. That phrase gets overused a lot. But if you're looking for a tool watch, uh, look and function, this is probably gonna be it. It has everything else that you would expect from Elliott Brown. It has the bolted down case back. You know, you got like three seals in the screw down crown. Everything else here is top notch as you always expect. But let's get right to the meat and potatoes of this review and that movement and the price. You're looking at over $800 when converted from British pounds. And this is the Seiko NH35 automatic. Now, Anybody that's watched more than enough of my videos when I've done a Seiko NH35 automatic watch for review, I've said the same thing many times. I, I kind of look at it, if you start going over that four or $500 price point, I want to see a different movement used. Now, there is nothing wrong with the Seiko NH35 movement, nothing at all. It's a great movement. I have it in a bunch of watches. I've reviewed it in it. My God, countless watches because it's one of the new go-to movements for micro brands. Nothing wrong with it, it works fine. Doesn't have the greatest beat or accuracy to it, but it is a great movement. A great movement for the price. But when you start looking at watches that are in that $800 range and up, you don't expect to see a Seiko NH35 movement. Now, probably about two years ago, I did a review of a, uh, I think it was a Zealous Hammerhead and it was like some kind of limited edition. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it had a Seiko NH35 and it was like $900. And I was like, man, they went ahead and they did this whole watch up and it was like a limited edition and a special edition, but they went with, let's be real here, a cheap movement. The Seiko NH35 is not an expensive movement. It's a cheap movement. It's a good, but cheap movement. Now, when you compare it to the quartz version of this watch, we're looking, I think, somewhere around $586 for the quartz version of this. So you're looking at over probably around two, two and a quarter more for that automatic movement. Hmm. I mean, that's, that's just, listen, there's not much I could say here. And, um, it's a, lot of, it's a lot to ask for that Seiko NH35 when there's nothing else changed to this watch. The loom is the same, the dial's the same, the case is the same, everything else is the same. But you've gone and put in a relatively inexpensive movement and you're charging a lot more money for it. Um, so it is what it is. 
I like the watch. I liked the watch when it was quartz. I like it now. I like the fact that they came out with an automatic version to appease a lot of people. I'm just not sure on the choice of the movement and the price. If this was a Swiss movement, even if it was say a Miyota 9015 or whatever, I could at least, okay, I could deal with it. Mm, at the Seiko NH35, you gotta be a real fan of this watch and this company. And listen, nothing wrong with that. The people who own these watches or own any, uh, any watch from Elliott Brown can testify that these watches are made really, really well. Probably above a lot of micro brands that we all own, that you guys own, that I review here. I'm not knocking any other micro brand, but this is a very solidly tough built watch. So they have that going for them and they do have their following and that is great as well. I just wish they went with a different movement. There's no way I can get around that in this video. It is what it is. But I hope you enjoyed this video. As I said, I will have it linked to the full review that I did about a year and a half ago. And again, the only difference was it was a quartz movement. So you can check that out if you wanna see more about this watch. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this look at the automatic Holton. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you on the next one.